Hello everyone, my name is Chef Fez from Norwich, Colorado and today I'm going to show you how to use the chef's knives like a professional. The first thing we need to talk about is knife safety and it all begins with where do we keep our knives, so where do we store them? There's a couple options, we can keep them in a drawer where you keep all of your sharp objects, you can put them on a wall, in those magnets or even a speed rack, whatever you do, wherever you keep your knives, just make sure that you wash and sanitize those areas regularly. When you go get your knife and it's time to go to our station, how do we walk around the kitchen with our knife? Do we walk like this with a knife? No. Or do we put our knife right here and keep it safe? No. This is so dangerous. The proper way of walking with a knife, we grab it by the handle, we point it down with the sharp end away from us, and as we're walking around the kitchen, we always want to use our kitchen voice. So tell people, let them know that you got a knife. Sharp knife behind you, it is not a secret. Let people know that you have a knife. When you come to your station and it's time to work, make sure that you're always cutting on a plastic cutting board, all right? Never cut directly on the metal because you're gonna ruin your knife. When it's time to work and you're working with your colleagues and it's really fun and everything, and my friend Chef Jessica wants to borrow my knife, it is okay, she can borrow my knife, but is this the proper way of passing a knife? No. How about like this? Uh-uh. The safest way of passing a knife is you're gonna set it down on your prep table and let them pick it up and walk away. When they're, not, when they're done with it and they're gonna bring it back and return it, she's gonna put it on my cutting board. Thank you, Chef Jess. And make sure that you keep it a nice sanitized Sir, sanitizer wipe, all right? So grab your sanitizer, put it on your hand, put your knife on it oh, with the sharp end away from you, and just run your blade with the towel, and that's how you're gonna sanitize your knife. If for some reason your knife is gonna fall, always let it fall. Don't ever catch a falling knife. You wanna just take a step back, let it fall, never catch a falling knife. On that end, what's gonna help you too is your shoes. So make sure that you wear closed toe shoes and that they are slip resistant, okay? When we are finished with the, for the day with the knife and it's time to go wash it, it is crucial that we never drop it in a sink full of water and walk away because somebody can reach in there and cut themselves. We always recommend washing them by hand, okay? And they're gonna last longer. And remember, the safest knife is a sharp knife. So keep those knives sharp. And now that we know all about knife safety, it is time to learn the parts of the knife. This is our chef's knife. And this back part right here is the handle. All of this black part of the knife is the handle. This is where we grip our knife, how we hold it. If you move just a little further, we have the bolster. And the bolster is what's gonna give us the stability and the balance of the knife. If we keep going forward, this right here is the spine. We all have one, this is the spine of the knife. And if we move just a little further to the end, this end right here is the tip. As we move down, this right here is the sharp end. This is what cuts the product and it's called the cutting edge. As we move to this corner over here, this is the heel. And the heel works in conjunction with the bolster and gives us that nice force to cut through something really dense and thick. And this whole part over here is the blade. All right, now that we know all about the knife safety and the parts of the knife, it is time to talk about our station setup. I'm gonna introduce to you a term that we use in the kitchen a lot. It is mise en place. It is a French term that means to put in place. And that's referring to all of the equipment and the food before we begin working. So we always gather all of our mise en place before we get started. And to show you that, I have my chef's knife, I have a paring knife, I have a peeler, I have my steel, I have a spoon that I'm gonna be using for cooking and other things. And if you notice, I also have my cutting board. And not only that, if you can see, it is secured by a slip mat. If you don't have anything underneath your cutting board, it is not very good because you will be using your cutting board and notice then the cutting board is gonna move forward. What's happening to my back? I'm leaning forward, I'm not taking care of my back, and I'm gonna be hurting later. So, how do you take care of that? Use a slip mat and secure your cutting board. It's not gonna go anywhere. You can also use a paper towel, but make sure that you wet it a little bit, and it's gonna hold your cutting board in place. 
This guy right here, this is my bench scraper or pastry knife and I'm gonna be using it once I have all of my product cut, I'm gonna be picking it up and transferring it to my container. I never wanna use my knife to pick up my product because do you see something wrong with this? It can be kind of dangerous and we're also gonna be damaging the cutting edge. So we never use that, we use our bench scraper. Talking about my containers, I have a trash can right here and the reason why I have a trash can is because say for example I'm gonna be peeling an onion the first layer you know I go here I put it into the trash versus going to the trash one time and then I come back and then I peel carrots and I go to the trash again all of those trips waste time so I put all of my trash here and I go to the trash one time only usable trim the second layer of the onion, for example. We don't want to throw it away yet because it's full of flavor, but we don't want to eat it because it's kind of fibrous. So I'm going to put it under usable trim, and when I make beans, maybe a stock, I can use that. I take all of the flavor from the food before I throw it away. And lastly, I have a finished product container. Like, you, like I said, once I'm cutting, I'm going to clear my cutting board and put everything in my finished product container. And over here, to my left, I have all of my food. I need to prep, cut, slice all of these items. And also, if you notice, I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna be grabbing with my left hand, chop, 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 slice, and I go to the right. If you notice, I have a flow, okay? So I don't have to cross, and the more you do this, notice my back, we wanna take care of our bodies. So, this is my mise en place. And the last thing I wanna show you is my wash and sanitizer. It is crucial that we have this to keep our food safe. That is my mise en place. The next thing we need to learn about is our stance. It is crucial that we have a proper stance to take care of our bodies because we're going to be standing in our, uh, right in front of our cutting station for quite a few hours. So we need to really have a good posture, a good stance so that we take care of our bodies. All right? And it all begins come as close as you possibly can to your prep table you'll be leaning against it but come really close to it open up your legs a little bit and bend your knees relax that is the crucial thing in this posture in this stance you need to be relaxed find your stance bend your knees pretend that you're riding a horse okay david i know you like riding horses what's your favorite horse's name cinnamon cinnamon we are all riding cinnamon pretend we are riding cinnamon we are nice and comfortable so come back to your prep station and stack up your shoulders over your hips and let's talk about this hand with one you're going to be holding your knife and with the other you're going to be holding your product all right so when you do that you kind of are going to have a triangle and we're going to be keeping all of our energy within this triangle so make sure again you are relaxed and you have a nice position in front of your cutting board and keep your triangle your energy within All right, the next thing we need to talk about is the proper grip or how are we going to hold the knives the proper way. I'm going to show you a couple different ways that are totally okay to grip your knife. If what you want to do is wrap your hand around, around the handle and this is totally okay. Notice where my thumb and my index finger are. We are completely wrapping the handle and this is going to allow me to move the knife where I want it to go. Okay. The other grip that I want to show you today, and for a lot of people, it might be new. It may feel a little different, but just like everything, the first time we try it, it's different, but the more we do it, it's just going to feel more natural. I want you to choke it up as much as you can, and as you move forward, your middle finger will stop by the heel. It's not going to let it go any further, and then we're going to pinch the blade right in the middle with our index and our thumb finger over here. So I'm really choking it all the way up. I'm pinching in the middle. Notice I'm not pinching down here because this is not great. Pinch right in the middle so we are away from the cutting edge and this is another proper grip. This is what I like. It gives me 100% control of the knife but I want you to find your own grip. I want you to feel comfortable and in control of the knife. That is the most important thing. You are in control of the knife. The other thing that I don't want you to do is the inchworm. And what is the inchworm? That is when we use our knife and we put the in index finger on the spine. And this is not a good thing to do, and I'll show you why. I want you to put your hand up, the one that holds the knife, and make a fist. 
release the index finger with the other hand I want you to make a peace sign, peace and love and just bring it over here and just go up and down, up and down you should feel right here some tendon, some nerves so the more you put your finger right here you are using extra nerves, extra tendons all the work that we do, because we do it for a couple of hours, repetitive motion is going to lead to injury. How do we avoid it? We go from inch to pinch. Whatever grip you want to do, just make sure that we don't put our index finger right here and we're going to keep our wrist safe. The other thing I don't want you to do is be the swashbuckler. And what is the swashbuckler? You know that person that throws the onion in the air and then they go, this is how I slice my onion. Not a very safe way to do. I want you to really be respectful to the knife and treat it properly. The other thing you shouldn't be doing is pointing, talking with the knife and saying, hey, you over there, hey, can, can you please? Don't. This is not for pointing or talking. All right, make sure that we keep our knives safe. Now, let's talk about the other hand, and this hand is called the guide hand, and it's the one that is going to hold the product and stabilize it, okay? In order for us to make a nice guide hand, I'm going to show you how to do it by making a claw. We are in Colorado, we have a lot of bears, so I want you to pretend you are an angry bear. Papa, mama bear, you know, like I'm going to touch your cuffs, and you're like, uh-uh, get away. Urgh. So make a really angry, mean claw, and bring it down 90 degrees, and towards your belly. If you notice, your elbow will stick out just a little bit, not too much because you're gonna hurt your back. So make sure you keep your stance and make your angry claw down towards your belly and only stick your elbow out just a bit, okay? When you're looking down, you should only see a wall between your first and second knuckle, all right? You should not be able to see your fingernails or your fingertips because if you do, they might be gone. So tuck them in. I don't want you to see your fingernails when you look down. This guy, we're gonna give him a break and hide him right underneath our hands. So when we're looking down, all we see is that wall of knuckles that I told you. That's all you wanna see. Depending on what you're holding, the claw may be a little tighter, or if you're holding a little bigger product, you might open it a little more. Big thing is that when you look down, you don't see your fingernails, all right? Because you're gonna keep them safe by tucking, tucking them in. And we're gonna be putting just a little pressure on our products. And as we're cutting and we're progressing, we're just gonna be pushing very gently the product forward. And that's how we keep our guide hand safe. Make an angry claw. So now it's time to put everything together and talk about the movement of the knife. Let's recap real quick. Let's find our stance, our proper position. Let's grab our knife, find our grip, Let's make our claw. I have my triangle, remember the triangle from, begin from the beginning. Now that I have this, let's talk about how the knife is gonna move. They always, there's always contact between the knife and the cutting board. They never stop touching. And what we're gonna be doing is always begin with your tip in the front. We're gonna lift the handle just a little bit. This is way too much and I'm exaggerating just to show you. You only wanna lift up your knife just a little bit, okay? When you hold your knife the proper way, the knife should just feel like an extension of your arm, okay? We're gonna lift up the handle, we're gonna drag it back just a bit, and as soon as we touch the product we wanna cut, we go forward and down. And then we lift up again, we drag it back, and we go forward and down. And this is the movement of the knife. If it helps you remember it, think of a rocking chair. It's an up and down movement, all right? And if you notice again, if you can see my knife and the cutting board, they never stop touching. There's always contact between the knife and the cutting board. And as we're doing that, what noises do you hear? You should not hear much, maybe like a nice settled whoosh, whoosh. That's the noise you wanna hear. If for some reason you're hearing, you need to stop that person and retrain them because they're not using the knife properly and they're gonna ruin your cutting edge. So again, we begin in the front, lift the handle just a bit, drag it back, and we go forward and down. Forward and down. Try to avoid cutting towards you because if you're cutting towards you, your bell is right here, not very safe. So stop as soon as you touch the product and go forward and down. 
Now it's time to start chopping, slicing and cutting. And the first we're gonna the first vegetable we're gonna do is a cucumber. If you notice it's got a little different shape, it's because this is from my garden. It's a local vegetable, so it is just as delicious as all the other ones. If you notice, any brown vegetable like this, it rolls all over the place and we need to make it safe. This will work for any round vegetables like zucchini, yellow squash, and we're gonna be making some half moons, all right? So let's bring everything back together. I got my position, my good stand, I got my claw, I'm gonna find my grip. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut both ends off, all right? And to make it safe and stable, notice something got stuck in my knife. Instead of using my finger, I'm gonna push it off with my bench scraper. Pick this up and put it in my trash can. Now, to make it stable, I'm gonna bring my tip down right in front of one end. With the other um, hand, I'm gonna make a tunnel with my index and thumb, and I'm gonna press gently, okay? And then I'm just gonna follow through and slice it and pull it out. Now, I have a flat surface, and it's gonna be nice and stable, not roll all over the place. So, to start making our half moons, we always begin, like I said, right here, I lift, my handle from the back and I drag it. And as soon as I touch the product, remember, we stop right there and we wanna go forward and down. I lift up, I bring it back again and I go forward and down. What I wanna show you and I wanna point out is that I always begin my cut right here and I finish way back here. I'm using the entire real estate of the knife. With every single cut, you wanna use as much of the real estate as you possibly can. So again, we start in the, in the front, we drag it back, and as soon as we touch the product, we go forward and down. Notice where my eyes are. I'm always focusing on what I'm cutting, I got a nice grip, I'm tucking in my fingernails, and I'm doing my slices. I lift up my handle, drag it back, touch the product, go forward and down, lift, drag it, go forward and back, all right? And you will be doing this action so that you get your beautiful half moon. And one thing we need to keep in mind, if you notice, they are all uniform. What does that mean? They are the same size. So make sure that you're using your bench scraper. You see all of this going on? Too much going on here. Clear your cutting board. Ah, I got more space, keeping it safe. And I'm gonna keep doing my half moons. Keep practicing this until you really have a nice uniform half moon with all of your cucumber, all right? And we'll continue with the next vegetable. The next vegetable we're gonna be cutting is a carrot. And we're gonna be making some sun rises, kind of like when the sun rises every morning and you see it out in the horizon. That's what our cuts are gonna look like. We also call it on the bias. And what does a cut on the bias mean? means simply that we're gonna be cutting it at an angle, okay? If you notice, I'm wearing gloves. All of these carrots we're cutting, we're gonna be putting them in a salad, raw. So every time you're working with ready-to-eat foods, you must be wearing gloves, okay? First thing, because I don't like to make a lot of messes because then I have to clean them up, I have to peel the carrot. And if you notice, I'm gonna have something to collect all of my peelings which will make the cleanup a lot easier. You can also use a little piece of plastic wrap or maybe parchment paper. Just remember, uh, they're not cheap, they cost some money. So whatever you wanna use, it's okay. Just have something that's gonna catch all of your peelings and make the cleanup a lot easier. Usually you will be cutting more than one carrot, but remember, just have something to catch all of your peelings. Now, just like the cucumber, if you remember, the first thing we need to do is cut both ends off, okay? Now, this is totally fine, and remember, this has got a lot of flavor, so before we throw it away, what can we do with it? What can we do with it? Oh, we can make some stock, or maybe make a soup. Um, it's got a ton of flavor, so we can use them later. We're gonna do the same thing as the cucumber. We need to make it in half, all right, to make it stable. This carrot, it's a little harder, more dense. We're gonna be using a little more muscle. So, if it makes you feel more comfortable, like for me, cut it in half, and we're gonna be applying the same technique. We're gonna do the tunnel. Tip down, right in front of it. With the other hand, we make the tunnel, we press gently, and we, voila. Let's do the other half. Again, 
put it right in the center of your cutting board, bring your tip down, tunnel, and you go down and you pull out. Now, you got some flat surfaces, all right? It's not gonna go anywhere. In order for me to make my sunrises, I need to put it at 11 o'clock, so I want you to think of your cutting board as a clock. We got 12 o'clock and six o'clock. If you are right-handed, it's gonna be pointing at 11 o'clock. If you are left-handed, it has to point at one o'clock, okay? So just follow along. So I'm gonna be putting my carrot at 11 o'clock. I'm gonna bring my knife, the grip, the stance, everything is the same, my claw. I'm gonna be looking down, and I'm gonna bring the knife right next to my carrot, pointing at 11 o'clock. In order for me to make my bias cut, I need to open up my knife just a bit. Again, pointing at 11 o'clock, I'm just gonna open it up a little bit, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half maybe, and I'm just gonna do my cuts right next to my carrot, very thin, they're nice and long, and they are really on the bias. I want you to keep practicing this at home until you cut your whole carrot, okay? So practice that. All right, we're making progress. The next vegetable we're gonna be cutting is a bell pepper. And for this, we're gonna be making julienne. And what is julienne? They're long, skinny strips. If it helps you remember, you can say, julienne is that French lady with the long, skinny legs. Maybe that'll help you remember what that cut is, okay? Peppers have all kinds of shapes. Sometimes they come really weird, you know, they all taste delicious. So if you see a, pep a pepper that looks a little misshapen, don't throw it away, it is still good. And the main thing that I wanna show you today is how to use the entire flesh. Because I see a lot of people, they cut both ends and they throw them away. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the top or the bottom, okay? So we're gonna talk about how to get as much of the flesh as possible. We begin standing your pepper up, and if for some reason you can't stand it up, just go ahead and cut the bottom and stand it up, and save it, don't throw it away. We're gonna begin with the knife at an angle, and we're gonna be following the shape of the pepper. So we start right here, as close to the stem as possible, and we'll be doing a little sawing action, just a little, and we turn the knife, and we follow the shape of the pepper, and I have a side of the pepper. I'm gonna put it right here on the side. I'm gonna grab it by the stem and turn it towards me so that I can kind of see what's coming up next. So again, I always begin on the side by the stem with my knife tilted. I do a little sawing action and then I strain, strain my knife and just go down. Keep turning it towards me, one more side, and the last one. And then I'm gonna go straight down, and look at this. I'm just gonna lay it down, cut right off. This is the only thing that you should be throwing away. We can't really do anything to it, unless you're composting or throwing it to the chickens. This is great, otherwise, we're gonna put it in the trash. If you notice, I have all of my sides here. This little membrane, it won't kill us if we eat it, but if we're gonna be serving it raw on a salad, it may not be so nice for, for the eye appeal. So what you can do is with your tip, this is where the tip comes in, just grab your side and away from you, wanna very gently get rid of the membrane. It's not a lot, but again, we eat with our eyes first. So we wanna make sure that our food looks as beautiful as we can. So I cut the membrane and maybe this one over here as well. And that's it. Maybe this one too, okay? It doesn't take that long, and it's just a little membrane that I'm removing. Look at this. I didn't take any red, any flesh, okay? It's going right into the trash. So, the best way or the easiest way to cut side of the pepper is skin side down. Something with the pepper that if you try and cut it like that, it might be a little difficult, so always put it skin side down. Everything is the same, my posture, my claw, I have my grip, and I'm gonna be cutting my long strips. So again, I begin over here, and I go forward and down. Again, we're looking for long, skinny strips, okay? And I have my uniform 
Because I always want to make sure everything is uniform and exactly as close as possible to the same size. And you notice I have my long, skinny strip. All right? What I want to show you next is what if you wanted to make a stir fry or a soup and it requires you to dice up your peppers? Well, you're already halfway there. With your julienne, you can grab two, three, maybe four, no more than four or five, because you want to be able to hold them to them and, and uh, stabilize them. So once you have your peppers, your julienne, you're going to bring them in the center and with your knife. On the side, and we're going to be cutting our pepper dices. If you notice, just like everything else, I'm looking for uniform, same size dices. And that's how you make a julienne or a diced pepper. The next thing I want to show you is how to give your knife a little maintenance because you will notice that after using it for a while, it's not going to be as sharp as it was in the beginning. There's a couple techniques. You can sharpen it or you can give it maintenance by honing it. To actually sharpen it, you need to take it to a professional or if you have a stone, that's the only way to sharpen it. And there's also diamond steels. It's the only way that you can sharpen it. We're not going to be doing that right now. All we're gonna be doing is give it some maintenance with our honing steel, all right? And just like I said, once you use your knife for quite a while, your cutting edge kind of starts opening up. With our steel, what we're gonna be doing is realigning our cutting edge so that it's as sharp as it was in the beginning, okay? The safest way to do it is to grab your steel, put it right in the middle, grab your knife, and bring it close to your steel without touching it yet. This position is 90 degrees. If you bring it, half of it will be 45. And if you move it or fold it another half, it will be about 22 and a half. You wanna keep this 22 and a half angle the entire time, and you're gonna begin by the heel and finish all the way at the tip. And then we wanna do the other side. And again, we start by the heel, and we run it through, keep that 22 and a half angle, and we run it all the way from the heel to the tip. We only do this a couple times, and you will notice your knife will be as sharp as it was in the beginning. Every time you do the honing, you need to make sure and wipe it to make sure there's no little pieces of metal getting into your food. So keep practicing and keep your knife sharp. The next vegetable we're gonna be cutting is the onion. And for this onion, I'm gonna be showing you two cuts. We're gonna be showing you how to emonce, which simply means saute slice, and we're gonna be dicing the onion. The first thing we need to do is like everything else, this vegetable rolls all over the place, so we need to make it stable. This is the stem end, and we're gonna cut it off, first part. Look at this. A lot of flavor is in here, so instead of throwing it away, we're gonna put it in the usable trim bucket. Now that I have a stable vegetable it's not rolling all over the place, I'm gonna cut it in half, and I'm gonna do the same technique as the tunnel for the cucumber and the carrot. So bring your tip down, hold it with the other hand, make a tunnel, a bigger tunnel, and just slide it in half and pull it out. One half will go right here, and this one, it is a lot easier to peel once you cut it in half than if you're trying to peel a whole onion. So all of these, again, ton of flavor, we're gonna put it right in our usable trim. The first cut is gonna be the emonce. So for this one, this kind of looks like a hairy belly button, right? We're not gonna need it for this one, so we're gonna cut it off. And I don't think there's a lot of flavor here, so this one can go right into the trash. All right, so I don't know if you can see this or tell very well, but we're gonna be following the grow lines. And if you notice, this is the shape of my onion with the grow lines going like this. Our knife will be following all of those grow lines. And everything else is the same, my posture, my claw, I'm gripping my knife. And if you notice, to follow the shape of the onion, I'm tilted a little bit. So I can start slicing my onion, Everything else we've been cutting, we always have to keep in mind 
the uniformity and I'm doing that the same with my onion trying to keep it all uniform if you get to this point my cutting board is becoming busy there's a lot of things going on I don't have a lot of space let's take a second pick up our emonce put it in a finished container finished product container and let's continue if you notice I can't really hold my onion anymore well boop, just drop it and now I can continue gripping my onion so I'm gonna continue with my emonce I'm making sure following down looking at my onion it looks uniform it looks the same look at these cuts can you see fajitas in the making maybe a little stir fry how about some roasted onions so many things you can do with the emonce so we have emonce let me get it out of the way next let's dice the onion and for this we are going to use the hairy belly button or the root end to keep it attached in one piece just like the first half of it we need to peel it and a trick right here about a finger away from the root end I want you to make a little slit just a very tiny slit why? because this is gonna make us a step point because I need to go in with my tip and follow the grow lines and make cuts but I only need to go as far as the cut that I made right here the little slit and as I'm making these cuts I'm really making them close to each other the closer you make your cuts the smaller the dice the more separated they are the larger your dice will be and I'm looking for a small dice so my cuts are very close to each other if you notice it stayed attached in one piece I'm gonna bring it to the center and I'm just gonna start slicing it and making my dices just like so I'm dicing my onion in a very fast and efficient way again look this other half is still attached in one piece and look at all these onions let's clear our cutting board and continue practicing at home so we're coming to the end of this video and I hope you've learned so many new tricks and techniques that you can use now we're going to show you how to cut a melon and I'm so excited to show you how to cut this melon because this one came from my garden believe it or not I grew this bad boy so just like the onion it's a round fruit and it could go all over the place just like everything else I think you're gonna see a theme that we need to make everything nice and safe and make it stable how do we do that remember this might sound familiar we're gonna cut both ends off all right I can grab this and put it in the trash and now if you notice I can stand it up one thing that I want to mention I am using a new cutting board a new knife and a new bench scraper why because the last time I was using I was chopping an onion and I don't want to transfer the flavors of the onion to the melon so I use I'm using new equipment clean and sanitized now that it's standing up and it's nice and secure I'm gonna be following the shape of the melon on the side a little bit and to do that I need to start with my knife tilted just for the beginning grab my knife I got a nice position and I'm gonna do in a little sawing action and notice I'm following down and when I come to the bottom I tilt it just a little bit too to get as much of the skin off as I can next I want to turn it towards me and now I can tell where the flesh and the skin meet so I follow the shape of the melon try not to take too much of the flesh because that would be very wasteful and we don't want to do that so I'm going to continue with my cuts and I'm really putting my eyes in my melon because I want to know where my knife is going and I'm guiding it so always pay attention to what you're doing and we're following the shape of the melon with my knife once I've done one side I'm going to grab my 
peels, and I'm gonna put it right here in my trash, and I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm just gonna inspect it and make sure that I took all the skin up. And if I didn't, then I'm just gonna take my knife and quickly go around and make sure that I'm taking all of the peel or as much of the peel up. Remember, use your base scraper to get the food out of your knife. I think I got all the peel off. Now, all the skin, cut it right in half and open it. Now, all of these seeds, we need to take them off. Use the right tool for the right job. You can use a scoop or a spoon. Just gonna go in here and clean it out, get the seeds out. Make sure we have no seeds because, you know, they won't hurt us if we eat them. But they don't look very nice on the plate, so don't serve any seeds. So make sure we scoop them out, get them into the trash, and beautiful, that's great. All right, so if you remember from the onion, I made a little slit right here, and I'm gonna do the same with the melon. Just like the onion, I'm gonna make little cuts with my tip and then pull out only as far as my slit that I made right here. Know your customers. If you have little ones, you're gonna give them little dices. If you have a little bigger uh, customers, you might wanna give them a little larger dice. The thing is, it is important to keep it in one piece because you'll keep your um, cutting board organized and clean. Look, I can open it up, it's still attached in one piece. We bring it, we flip it, make a quarter turn, and we'll, we'll bring it to the center. I got my claw, and I'm just gonna make my dices. And this is very easy because the flesh of the melon is quite soft. When you come to this end, let me clear my cutting board because again, there's too much going on. I have a clean new container just for my melon, so there's no transferring of flavors. And this last piece, I'm gonna cut it right in half and make my dices. And voila, I have my melon dices, they're uniform, I can feed this to my little ones and they will be happy because my melons are the sweetest. All right, keep practicing and I'm gonna let you cut the other half all by yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video. We wish you good luck and keep practicing those knife skills.